image of Christ crucified. And look at the shape of it, how the hands are stretched out, how the feet are positioned, where the head is, all of that. When we consider the visual symbolism of Christ on the cross and consider that the kingdom is within you, it gives us a visual image of the female anatomy. And Christ's consciousness is a feminine or right brain principle. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. So the female anatomy is what's being depicted with the crucifixion. We know as above, so below, as within, so without. And above us, we even have a depiction of the same visual symbolism of the Christ on the cross. We have the zodiac sign of Aries or the ram. Now, interestingly enough, remember that God provided Abraham a ram in the bush in the place of sacrificing his son, Isaac, a ram in the bush. When we look at the female anatomy and we know that there is a bush around it or the hairs. Now, the symbolic truth about the crucifixion of Christ consciousness or the right brain feminine, divine feminine principle is that this is what's really being depicted, the divine feminine principle in that stretching of the cross. The sign of Aries, its mantra is I am. Now in the scriptures, God, he, he asked him, he said, who should I say sent me? He said, tell them I am sent you. And the zodiac sign of Aries, the mantra for that is I am. It's the first zodiac sign and it's the start of the new year, the the real, real new year. Spring begins or the new year begins during the sign of Aries. The world celebrates and worships the death of Christ during the sign of Aries. And it also celebrates the resurrection during the same event. The symbolism of the cross is depicted in the uterus and also in the ram's head. The ram's head is the symbol of Amun-Ra, or the sun god. Even we know, like at the beginning of my shows, y'all hear the shofar, the shofar, or the ram's horn being blown. So the connection of the symbol of Aries, the ram, also connects to Amun-Ra, the sun god. And we say amen at the end of our prayers. Now, we have been taught that the Son of God was crucified and resurrected at the time of year that we know as, quote-unquote, Easter. It usually falls within Easter, usually, almost always falls in the sign of Aries. Easter is Ishtar, which is another divine feminine energy from another spiritual system. Uh, that is the goddess that it is called. The ram's head also connects to the womb in visual presentation. Even when you look at that side view, when you look at the side view of the womb, you look at the side view of the brain, and then you look at the side view of this ram's head, and they all look the same. So this ram's head connects to the womb, and it connects to the brain in its visible, in its visual presentation. These symbolisms denote that the Son of God or Christ consciousness is a divine feminine principle. So, with all of these men who are running around here claiming to be the second coming, claiming to be Christ, I, I would beg to differ. If we were waiting on a physical form, of Christ to return, if we were waiting on a physical form of Christ to return, in my opinion, that Christ would be a woman. It would be an Aries woman. She would be from a holy city or city with a holy name, so to speak. She would have wounds on her body that depict injury of crucifixion on their body, somewhat of stigmata markings, birthmarks, are actually, in a lot of cases, they are the death wounds that you incurred from your previous life. So this person, in my opinion, would have wounds in this life or markings in this life in the, in the parts of the body where the sacred 
injuries of crucifixion occurred, in my opinion. Now, when we study uh, the Apocrypha books, one in specific that I'm always referencing is the Apocryphon of John, because this is where it talks about the mother, father, and Barbalo. Barbalo being the name of the mother, father. And there are several writings on the subject of Barbalo. Uh, the Nag Hammadi text, it talks about the three descents of Barbalo and how she came on three different occasions. Now, interestingly enough, Ju Judas also recognized that Yehoshua came from the realm of Barbalo. It says it here. that it can be found in the gospel of Judas, where Judas Iscariot says to Yeshua, that I know you come from the immortal realm of Barbalo. Now, upon researching the subject matter of Barbalo, you will find that she, it is said that she descended three times. And on the second descent, as it says here, she descended as a woman. It says here, I am the voice that appeared through my thoughts. I am one joined to another. I am called the thought of the invisible one because I am called the unchanging speech. I am called she who is joined to another. I am alone and undefiled. I am the mother of the voice, speaking in many ways, completing all. Knowledge is in me a knowledge of things everlasting. I speak in every creature, and I was known by all. I lift up the speech of the voice to the ears of those who have known me, the children of light. Then it continues on to say, Now I have come the second time in the likeness of a female and have spoken with them. And I shall tell them of the coming end of this realm and teach them of the beginning of the eternal realm to come. The one without change, the one in which our appearance will be changed. We shall be purified in those eternal realms. In those eternal realms, from which I revealed myself in the thought of the likeness of my masculinity. I settled among those who are worthy in the thought of my changeless eternal realms. So in this second descent, this text is saying that she descended in the likeness of a female. So, and as I said earlier, uh, Judas told Yehoshua that he knows that he comes from the eternal realm of Barbalo. So there was a time where he descended as a male. I mean, that Barbalo descended as a male. There was a time that Barbalo, the second descent, will appear in the likeness of a female. And then the third descent is something else, a different type of descent. But even this ancient text that was removed from the Bible, wonder why they talk about this Christ as a feminine principle appearing as a female in the likeness of a female. In closing, I'll say this. In regards to this Christ return, of course it is talking about a consciousness that a mass amount of people will ascend to. But with all of these different men who are out here claiming to be the Christ return, don't forget that even Yehoshua told you that the kingdom of heaven is within you. Study anatomy and physiology and you'll get a lot further in understanding than what you would listening to these men proclaim 
to be something that they are not. And that's all I have for you right now. Until next time, love y'all. Bye.